Hi, my name is Josh Mahoney, Chief Market Analyst at Scope Markets. Let's look ahead to the upcoming Bank of England interest rate decision taking place on Thursday, the 9th of May. Certainly, this comes at a time where we have a big focus on central banks as a whole. Of course, the FOMC behind us, the RBA rate decision uh, as a precursor to this Bank of England decision. And everyone's really questioning not whether we're going to see rate cuts this time around, but quite when that's going to happen, because we've seen significant shifts in terms of expectations of late. And that really brings the Bank of England in light because markets have pushed back the view on when we're going to see that first rate cut. Previously, it was June. Um, but now we're looking a little bit further out. And there's question marks about whether that's justified or not. Certainly, we have seen a resurgence in inflation. I want to take you first and foremost through uh, these inflation charts that I have uh, those of you that follow uh, our videos will probably recognize these. So key thing here is we're at 3.2% on UK inflation, but the expectation is we're going to see some serious disinflation in particular at the next reading, the next inflation reading, because if you look at that April 2023 reading on the left in the middle, it's 1.21. That drops out. And let's say we replicate last month, which was 0 0.6, which is actually a strong figure. Even if we saw that, then that would potentially take us back down into the sort of mid twos. So we could get back to like 2.5, 2.6. Maybe, hopefully, uh, we're lower than 0 0.6 on that monthly figure. And certainly that is going to be key also, because, you know, if we do see a decline from, say, 3.2 to 2.5, then that could you know, embolden us to start thinking that we might see the Bank of England move swiftly. But if you look at the last two monthly metrics, they have been very solid. And therefore, if we saw a third one, then, you know, the idea is that we're moving in a trajectory that isn't necessarily ideal. It isn't moving in a trajectory that puts us on a, on a pathway to 2%. In terms of the sort of annualized outlook where you can see the six month and the 10 months. So where are we in a couple of months time? Where could we be in six months time? Both of them below target. Um, but that doesn't necessarily account for the fact that the, the, the heavier prints uh, within the last 10 months have been recently. And so we cannot continue on the current trajectory that we're moving on. But nonetheless, we do have significant disinflation coming in the next two months, certainly in the next month. And it's a similar kind of picture in terms of the core figure uh, over 4%, so 4.2, but you've got 1.2, 0 0.8, both of those dropping out soon enough. So we're expecting to see significant disinflation. And that's why we have got the basis for this potential dovish outlook for the Bank of England. You can see here in terms of the outlook, the expectation is zero, uh, sorry, 5.25%. Uh, so essentially remaining as is. Um, but there's probably going to be more interest on the breakdown in terms of the votes. You can see one member voting for a rate cut at the last meeting. Whether that's going to change remains to be seen. And certainly that could be a sort of soft way of pointing towards us moving in the direction of a rate cut. We also see uh, the growth numbers coming out later in the week on Friday with the expectation that we're going to see the Q1 figure of 0 0.2, the uh, year on year figure uh, coming up to 0 0.5 and the month on month up to 0%. So all of them, well, not in negative territory, not all of them positive. Um, but certainly this comes off the back of the latest OECD estimates, which didn't really make for great reading for the UK. You can see towards the bottom here, no, we've seen a downgrade in terms of the expectations for growth this year, a measly 0.4% expected for 2024. That was 0.7. We saw a downgrade for the OECD. Uh, will the GDP numbers uh, reiterate that, that view that the UK uh, sort of growth picture and economic uh, outlook is relatively tepid and that might push the Bank of England to feel like they need to cut rates sooner than, say, the Federal Reserve? Then looking at unemployment, you can see there's two different metrics here, the, the standard unemployment rate and then the claimant count rate, both of them still relatively low. We're seeing greater volatility in our unemployment rate number, but ultimately we haven't necessarily seen a huge uptick in terms of these metrics. So they don't necessarily force the hand of the Bank of England as things stand. Um, and then you look at the outlook for this meeting and future meetings. So 92% uh, chance attributed to a, a rate pause for this meeting. Then it starts to shift. So June, that was previously the, the expected first uh, rate cut time. That's now uh, sort of 34% chance, 34.5% chance of a rate cut. And instead, market's expecting a 65% chance that we keep rates steady. 
And then we're expecting to see that rate cut in August, 35% chance of us keeping it steady. And the rest attributed to rate cuts. So there is a view that we will see the Bank of England cutting rates in August now. And the expectation is that we'll see roughly two rate cuts this year. So things have tempered somewhat over recent months. Um, and the outlook from the Bank of England will be key in that. Now, part of that will be the votes. And like I said, the breakdown is that we had one member voting for a cut. If we saw more of that, uh, then it will give us greater confidence that we're moving in that direction and potentially uh, could see a June rate cut come into the, the forefront. I would say that we are likely to see a significant disinflation in terms of the, the next one or two uh, inflation metrics. But the numbers we're seeing on a month, month on month basis are a little bit concerning. And that makes me feel more confident about the August meeting than the June meeting. As previously, I felt quite confident about it. But these monthly figures that have been coming out recently are a little bit concerning. In terms of some markets to watch, here's the FTSE 100. Now, ultimately, the trend is your friend on this one. And we're breaking higher once again as we're closing out this week. And certainly the view is that, you know, we're likely to see a continuation on this uh, trajectory. If we see a breakdown back below this 8094 low, then that points towards the possibility of us rolling over in a more meaningful manner. Until that happens, the trend is one of higher highs and higher lows. And the expectation is that we continue on that pathway if we are to continue the trend. And so, you know, that's the name of the game is trying to find trends and stick on to stick on them until they tell you otherwise. And this has been an outperformer when you look in terms of European markets, US markets. The FTSE has really been doing well late, lately, uh, led in part by financials, also mining. Um, so, yeah, with a push through resistance, then we've now set our new swing low so we can shift up the level that needs to be broken to negate that trend. That's 1894. And then an interesting pair to watch is the pound against the Canadian dollar. Essentially, markets had been expecting a rate cut from uh, the BOC in June. That has been uh, gradually pushed back and certainly comments coming from uh, the governor of the Bank of Canada essentially saying they think that they're going to see inflation remain at 2.9% for several months. So Markets a little bit concerned that maybe we might not necessarily see the rate cut immediately that many had been speculating. So that could point towards the possibility of strength for the Canadian dollar. And certainly the key thing here is, you know, what's the tone from the Bank of England? If it comes out relatively dovish on the view that we are going to see, you know, a weak growth picture, uh, we've, of course, got inflation expected to move sharply lower over the coming months then that could point towards this market having topped out a key area uh, of resistance if we see here in terms of uh, price is around 172, this area that has a number of different peaks, 172 up to 173. So is this going to be the top once again? Well, let's look at the four hour chart. You can see as things stand, still continuing on this vein of higher highs and higher lows. But certainly if we start to break lower, you'd be looking for a move below 171 in particular this 1705 uh, for sterling against the Canadian dollar. If I put that trajectory uh, and overlay it with the uh, ratio between the UK 10-year and the Canadian 10-year, you can see here that there's a very close correlation here. So ultimately, this is being driven by expected uh, differentials in terms of not only yields, but of course, in terms of interest rates. Things picking up a little bit at the moment, um, but certainly all eyes will be on the Bank of England as we head into a decision and a GDP uh, release that should tell us a lot more about whether the June rate cut is likely, whether we have more members voting for cuts this time around, whether we should instead be expecting it to come in August um, and whether the UK growth outlook remains strong enough to facilitate them being able to hold off for as long as they feel they need to. If we see weak growth, uh, GDP data coming out, then of course, that could point towards a possibility of near term rate cuts. And again, that could weaken the pound off the back of it. So plenty to sink our teeth into. It's going to be a really interesting uh, report, if not for the decision itself, but the breakdown in terms of the votes and the outlook and sentiment uh, that comes from Andrew Bailey in terms of how they see interest rates going forward, given the decline in terms of inflation that's expected in the coming months. But at the same time, the near term inflationary pressures that appear to be building if you look at those month on month figures.